it's been really wonderful at Pacific Collegiate School. For example, yesterday or day before yesterday at uh, the Day of Silence, we had an advisory day, which means the students um, meet with a teacher advisor, about 15 kids to the, each teacher. And because it was a theme of you know LGBT bullying, a lot of teachers emailed me and said, do you have anything for me that you, know, you could help? And we have a great library on campus and I have about 15 videos. And so I was easily able to say, yes, I do. And the teachers knew they could come to me and, and no, you know, Emily's someone on campus who would have this. And so I said, anyone who wants um, can come get a, a, a video. And so about five teachers on campus came and borrowed videos and were able to share that with students on campus. So that impacted all of those students on our campus that day. Um, and it was really great to be able to provide that to those teachers. And I got some really great feedback that day, which was really great. I wish more teachers would get involved. I think a lot of people see that there is a club on campus, and so they say, hey, we're, we're doing our part, we're in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is a safe place because there is so much LGBT visibility, because uh, trans people can be out, because lesbians can be out, because gay people can be out, and oh wow, we have out people on campus, it must be perfect, but it's not. Uh, students are still saying that's so gay. Students still call each other fags. And I think sometimes because it's, it's not always horribly directed at somebody in front of them, they think that, you know, it's, it's not a horrible problem at our school. We haven't had someone beat up for it. Um, they think, you know, we've come a long way, so I don't need to do anything. But just those little comments of that's so gay are really hitting people hard. They think that, uh, you know, they hear that and it may silence them in so many ways. They may not come out as early as they would otherwise. They might not talk to people as early as they would otherwise. And so if we get more teachers involved talking about that and telling kids why it's not okay to say those words, if we get more teachers showing their support, um, I think that we can create a safer environment. Um, I wish more teachers would come to our meetings, though I do think it's pretty amazing that teachers are showing videos in their classrooms. Well, I didn't know what any of the alphabet soup was, LGBT or any of that was, until I was probably in junior high. And the first time I knew what a lesbian was, my initial reaction was like, oh bleep, <laughs> that's me. Um, and then I put it out of my head because I was a good Catholic girl at a good Catholic Catholic school. And so I was like, you know, in my head, I was thinking like, oh my gosh, that can't be me. That can't be me. So I put it out of my head for a long time. And I don't think I really, you know, I battled with myself for a long time. And then I finally came out to some friends my junior year in high school. Um, and then I shaved my head and dyed a rainbow on it <laughs> and, um, my senior year and got fully immersed in the, the queer community and uh, helped start the Strange Project. Um, two that really stand out that I've only ever been able to watch once are uh, Dancer in the Dark and Life is Beautiful. I think they're two of the most powerful movies I've ever seen um, about people who've ha faced severe adversity. Uh, they're two very beautiful movies, but don't watch them if you're in a bad place because they're really heavy. <laughs> I can't just pick one. I love colors. Um, I used to always say red was my favorite color. Then before that, I think I said blue. Um, in high school, I used to always say rainbow sparkly. Um, hence the rainbow dyed on my head. But uh, I don't. I really like a lot of colors. Right now, I probably go with like a greenish teal. Oh, and what does it mean to me? It's the color of the ocean. We live in Santa Cruz. It's a good color.